How about uh, Dean of the College of Agriculture, Dean Charles E. Barnhart? <laughs> Dr. David Roselle, President-elect of the University of Kentucky. Seated right next to me here is a fellow that so many of you know so well, Coleman White, Assistant Director of Extension for 4-H. And Paul Everman, Executive Vice President of the Kentucky Farm Bureau, who gave our invocation. Seated next to him is a fellow that has worked so hard on this center. First of all, he was working with uh, the Economic Development Administration, and then later he retired from that job, and we put him to work with uh, friends of Kentucky 4-H, and he's now our treasurer, Charlie Mason. <laughs> and next to him is Shirley Phillips, Associate Director for Cooperative Extension. Shirley? Uh, as, a, as a brand new Kentuckian, I can say you certainly know how to make a fuss over a person. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm leaving uh, the Commonwealth of Virginia after a long time living there. And uh, in particular, I've been doing my present job for, uh, for several years. And uh, I, uh, when I moved to the job, I inherited a, a secretary, a wonderful secretary, who had trained, uh, she trained me and she trained several of my predecessors in that job. You all know the, the kind of person that I'm talking about. And when I decided to leave and come to the University of Kentucky, I thought I detected just a little bit of sadness on her part. So I said to her, I said, Mary, don't be upset. They're going to hire someone who will do this job much, much better than I ever did it. And she said, yeah, that's what they said when they hired you. <laughs> That's maybe what I remember most about leaving Virginia. <laughs> I, I have been traveling an awful lot in Kentucky, and there are a lot of things that stand out in, uh, in my memory of standing in, uh, traveling in Kentucky, too. Uh, one that I'll tell you about was we were driving along the highway, and we came uh, past a sign, and it said uh, on the sign, Joe Jones, veterinarian slash taxidermist. <laughs> And then, un under that, under that, it said, "Either way, you get your dog back." <laughs> I, I want to thank you for inviting me to take part in the dedication of of this Kentucky Leadership Center. It's a wonderful opportunity for me to meet this, this group of people who are representative of the interest in, in, in 4-H in Kentucky. And I'm always glad to do an event associated with 4-H, the youth program of our University of Kentucky's Cooperative Extension Service. Kentucky has 224,000 young people enrolled in 4-H programs. That makes it the largest in the South and the second largest in the whole nation. I believe everyone associated with this project should be proud of, of their accomplishments. And I certainly congratulate you for successfully undertaking to build a leadership center that, that is truly, truly representative of a fine educational program. It's a considerable source of pleasure for me to come to Kentucky and be associated with such a quality, forward-looking effort. I especially want to congratulate the friends of Kentucky 4-H, made up of business and civic leaders from throughout the state, for their leadership in initiating and completing this Kentucky Leadership Center. Their unselfish expenditure of time, money, and effort will reap benefits to Kentucky and our nation for many years to come. It's easy to see how their efforts benefit people when you see results such as those reported in a recent study of the university's sociology department. That study, result, those, the results of that study indicate that farmers with 4-H backgrounds have more education, higher gross sales from their farms, and higher net income. This is a clear indication that an educational concept, namely 4-H, that is more than 75 years old, 
continues to be a viable force in our society, and especially within the Commonwealth of Kentucky. This leadership center will help the university and all of you, we hope, we do invite you to use the center, to continue the educational heritage and to make the best better for our youth. It also will provide an ideal setting for training volunteer leaders, homemakers, agricultural groups, community leaders, professional staff members, and a host of other groups and associations. For the College of Agriculture, the center will be used for all educational programs in agriculture, home economics, 4-H, and community development. This facility will help the university to continue to develop and implement innovative ways of reaching farmers with information that will help them realize more income from their land by using the research information developed in the agricultural experiment stations. Various civic, church, and other groups in this area and throughout the state should find this to be a fine facility for retreats, meetings, and other activities. We genuinely want it to be a community center. Let me once again congratulate everyone associated with this project. It's the realization of a dream, not a dream of selfish glory, but a dream of altruism that will continue to help people develop into the kinds of citizens needed to keep our state and our nation strong. I personally am very proud to be part of this program, and I look forward to continuing at the University of Kentucky to build the educational systems associated with youth programs. Thank you all. President Roselle, distinguished and important people here at the head table, and the most important people of all, those of you out in front that caused this to be a reality. Uh, Lynn Schrader indicated that uh, I was sort of a reluctant uh, uh, partner in this thing, and they had to make a few trips. Uh, to see me to get my support. Uh, that's one way of getting uh, people to do things. Conrad Feltner and I decided on uh, the 12th of December, uh, 1968, that we would build this building in this particular spot. And so we've had to maneuver around quite a lot to uh, cause this committee to, uh, to support us in this. And I even had to act like I didn't even care where it was going to be built down here. But it, it uh, certainly has uh, been a great uh, almost 20 years that we've been involved in developing this facility here. On the 12th of December, 1968, a few of us, and there are a few people here in the room uh, that were also here, uh, climbed across a barbed wire fence out here on the road in this uh, uh, high spot uh, just as you come in and uh, we uh, did a little dirt moving and the like and that constituted the groundbreaking for the Cumberland 4-H camp and of course this has been our uh, great 4-H camp we've enjoyed so much uh, the opportunity of working with all of the people in this uh, part of the state and uh, others from throughout the state that are interested in our camping program and everyone has been hugely successful, and uh, you uh, do it with enthusiasm and with great professional expertise, and we could not have our great cooperative extension service in Kentucky and the greatest 4-H program in the world if it were not for all of you sitting out here today, our uh, most effective and, and highly admired 4-H leaders. This camp, if this, if this facility uh, were to be dedicated to one group, I would dedicate it to the 4-H, the volunteer 4-H leaders of this state. You have done so much for our young people. You've done so much for the citizens of the Commonwealth. And I know we can plan on your continuing to do these great things. There are two or three other people that I want to recognize specifically uh, for having brought this uh, building and this program into uh, reality. Uh, certainly we could not have had this building uh, at the stage of completion as it is today if it 
were not for the great uh, congressman from the 5th District, uh, Hal Rogers. Ron Sheets is another person that I uh, certainly cannot praise more. Uh, Ron uh, is not a graduate of our College of Agriculture, but we have no uh, person in this state that is, has been a more effective, loyal, and dedicated. And Coleman, I want to especially uh, thank you and recognize you for the wonderful job you have done with our 4-H program since you have been assistant director for 4-H and for all of your innovative and imaginative ideas and things that you have done to improve our 4-H program and the hours and hours of persistence uh, that you have given the development of this of this building. I also want to thank John Walker, Associate Dean and the College of Agriculture for Development and my right hand man <clears throat> for the many, many hours he and his staff have spent in supervising uh, the construction of the building and working on details and working on uh, the plans. John has been involved in working on the plans of, of how we will schedule the building, what the cost uh, charges will be and all of these things. We could not have uh, had this building occur if it had not been for the help of, of our own people like John Walker and Coleman White and, and certainly uh, these uh, tremendous uh, public servants uh, like Ron and Lynn and uh, Charlie and uh, Stan and the others several hundred that have been involved in this thing. So uh, I hope you all are as happy with the building and with the accomplishments here as I am. Thank you. There's a couple of uh, points that I would like to share with you and a, a couple of people that, by couple in my definition, is more than one. So uh, there's a couple of things that I would like to, to do at this time in honor of, of these persons. It's a real pleasure for me to say to you, I hope that you saw some plaques uh, on the walls as you came in the front entrance. Now this uh, plaque that was just unveiled is going to be uh, erected on the right of the front doors as you enter the facility. And as you come through those doors, you entered into, I think, a, a beautiful lounge. There's been some tribute paid to the individual that this lounge is named for, but I would like uh, at this time to ask Ron Sheets, for whom this lounge is named for, uh, to stand and remain standing until I recognize three other persons, if you would, Ron, thank you. I think it's, it's just a, a magnificent place for the board to meet, and of course it's uh, for your use, and I'm sure that many of you will probably use it more than the board of directors will. And Lynn, I think it would be appropriate uh, for you representing the, the board of directors to stand. <clears throat> Reference has been made to Conrad Feltner. Uh, Sarah, a very good friend of mine, and uh, members of her family are here. We're very pleased that they're here, and I would ask that, that they stand at this time. The uh, Linwood Schrader Conference Center, Lynn, I, Lynn is doing double duty on representing friends and also the, the conference center. Uh, we feel that, that the person that has done just an extraordinary, outstanding job uh, in helping to coordinate all of this, the fun that many people have had in putting this complex together, uh, that it would be very appropriate for the conference center, room A, B, C, and D, to be named in honor of Linwood Schrader. And Mr. Gary Miller, President of the State Extension Advisory Council. And I'm going to join them over here, and we'll unveil the plaque.